I'm Sean Thinner from Limerick Post, here are the top stories from the week. Former Limerick GD and long-standing Minister for Finance, Michael Noonan, was honoured this week by UL as part of a group that had a long-standing, tangible impact in society. Part of the group as well was John Slattery, Anna Anderson and Irish singer Paul Brady. At the honouring, the former minister spoke of the current government coalition. A government coalition includes the party that he unsuccessfully ran as party leader and stood for Minister for Finance for the coming years. In part of which he spoke of how the current coalition of government will be looked on fondly in years to come because of how they dealt the brunt deal of the COVID pandemic. And they had to deal with the coalition through the worst crisis in living memory. However, Michael Noonan admitted that he was glad when he stepped away from politics when he did. The long-standing TD stood down from his seat that he almost had for 40 years in February of last year. In other news, after the vote to repeal the 8 in 2018, a referendum which saw a 2 to 1 vote to repeal the 8, making sure that abortion came in under government legislation, now it is time for the yearly review of that legislation, meaning so the government abortion is now a topic for discussion yet again, and which so has brought with it the scenes that surrounded the abortion vote in 2018, scenes of protest and protesters. But now, the protesters that are appealing for dramatic change are the anti-abortion side. These protesters, hundreds of which that gathered outside the door demanding for the review to look at the shocking outcomes of the abortion referendum, those shocking outcomes being abortions actually taking place, shock I know, some of which of those abortions uh, protesters were obviously from Limerick. Now these protesters have demanded that the review should look at the shocking high numbers of abortion rates that have come since the abortion referendum was brought through. The issue with the abortion rates is not that they are happening because that's kind of what happens when something gets legalised. It happens. It's that it's not more than they were promised. It's claiming that they were, when they were promised during the referendum that it would just be for rare cases that people getting abortions and wouldn't be a prevailing trend. Them saying that now over 11% of all 100 pregnancies are now aborted. But that number does sound high. But when you look at other European counterparts and you look at Spain having 23%, the UK having 27 and when Norway and Netherlands very progressive countries having 22 and 15 percent respectively. Other countries that have lower than us currently are places like Croatia but Croatia have had abortion legalized for almost 60 years so it's something that's very normalized in their country something that we are way off from doing so. So when we look at the European counterparts we're not at an ungodly level of abortions as the anti-abortion crowd would want us to make out. But it's certainly not something we should sweep under the rug because how we got here is because of democracy and sweeping one side under the rug because we don't agree with them is not how we got here. I've been Sean from the Limit Post. Those have been the top stories in the week. Have a good afternoon, evening or night.